Hey church family, thanks for joining me tonight for a Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, of course, our elections were last night. And regardless if the people you voted for won or didn't win, um, I hope that um, you are uh, still praying for them. We'll continue. If you haven't been, start. And uh, we know that ultimately uh, our hope is in God and we, we look to him and we need to continue to stay vigilant, diligent, and uh, keep sharing the, the, the truth of the scriptures. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight, but hope you were able to vote. And uh, let's continue now as a church to do what 1 Timothy 2 says and, and be in prayer uh, for those who are in office and those who are assuming positions in office as well. I want to uh, encourage you tonight to check your emails. Uh, and there you will find our, our missionary of the week. Uh, they are the Dobb family. The Dobbs are in the Middle East. And Bill and Joanne have been there now um, for quite a number of years. And Bill oversees a seminary in which they train pastors to go throughout the entire Middle East preaching the gospel. And you can read their latest letter and update and report and be praying for them, praying for their safety, of course, and uh, be praying for uh, just God to continue to bless their ministry and an encouraging report. You'll get to read that tonight. Also, uh, make sure you open up the, the prayer list. And let's be praying for folks. I want to mention a couple of people uh, tonight for sure. Pray for Isolene Arnu, longtime member. Uh, and then pray for Seema Mathura. Uh, she's the daughter of Trevor and Carol Mathura. Both of these ladies are having surgery tomorrow. So if you remember, pray for Isolene and Seema, especially uh, as they go in for surgery tomorrow. And then I, I want to uh, encourage you to continue to pray for Anthony and Debbie Vasquez. And many of you know by now that Debbie uh, was terminated from her job for the, uh, with the New York City Library after 31 years. And many of you kind of know some of the uh, uh, issues that have taken place over the last several months. And uh, really, um, uh, Debbie was put on uh, trial really for her faith. Uh, and asked uh, to uh, be recused of having to participate in some really unbiblical type of practices as a children's librarian. Um, and uh, they kind of want to make an example of her, it appears, and uh, led up to this past uh, Wednesday and asked they did for her to sign some documentation that really was not true. And because she refused to do that, they terminated her job. So be praying for Anthony and Debbie. Most of you know Anthony's uh, battling with cancer and is in treatment right now. And now um, this is a very difficult time for them as they're uh, trying to really pray through what are the next steps. And so anything that you can do to encourage them and, and uh, uh, be a help to them, I know they'd appreciate that. Uh, I'll be reaching out to us uh, as a church family as well in the days to come about some things we can do, but be praying for them in this time. And uh, we know ultimately all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So pray for uh, Debbie, pray for Anthony, that God will give them peace, encourage them. And uh, I know that God has uh, uh, their times in his hands. So Continue to pray for them, and tonight's a great time for us to do that. Continue to pray for the church, and we're excited about uh, all that is upcoming in the days to come. We'll share some things with you on Sunday about projects as well, and so I hope that you'll be a part of that. If you have your Bibles tonight, take them and turn to Luke chapter 10. Last Wednesday night, we started uh, Conversations with Jesus, uh, and that's kind of the title, and uh, Parables. Uh, that Jesus taught, uh, envisioned sitting at the feet of Jesus and uh, listening to him teach. Jesus taught many parables during his earthly ministry. You say, what is a parable? We mentioned this last week. It's really an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. It's a simple story with some word pictures, but one that has powerful spiritual lessons. And Jesus would often teach these parables so that the common people could understand. Uh, many times when Jesus taught a parable, the self-righteous and the self-satisfied people of Israel missed the higher meaning. But people who were eager um, and had open hearts uh, understood 
uh, almost 40 times Jesus taught parables, stories um, that had significant uh, biblical truth. So uh, through the fall here, um, and toward the end of the year, we're going to look at just several of these parables, many well-known, some maybe not so well-known, and um, hopefully be reminded and learn some things uh, again or anew uh, from Jesus' uh, conversations uh, with people. In, in Luke chapter 10, <coughs> we're told the story that we often describe as the Good Samaritan, one of my favorite parables. And uh, I want us to begin reading in verse 25. The Bible says this, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted or tested Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit life, eternal life? Of course, that's a valid question, but we know that his intent was not uh, completely pure. And at times you, you find people that will seek to make you a fool of you as a Christian or to mock you. And Jesus said, well, what is written in the law? How do you read us thou? Well, you know, you are an intelligent man. What's the law say? Oh, and it's always good to ask people when they ask you, um, ask them, well, what do you think is necessary? And uh, how, how does one obtain heaven? So this man said, well, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Now he's quoting from the Shema, Deuteronomy chapter 6, where uh, God told Moses to tell Israel there's one God and uh, you're to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then, of course, Jesus would labor, later corroborate uh, that indeed there are two great commandments to love the Lord our God and then love your neighbor as yourself. So this man uh, responds in that way. He he knows, if I can say, uh, say it this way, he, he, he knows the right passages. He knows uh, the right paper. Uh, the, the, the right uh, words to say uh, uh, on paper or from the scriptures. And Jesus said, well, you've answered right. So go and do this and you'll live. How many of us know it's one thing to know things. It's another thing to put them in practice and to live them. And there are many people in this world who have a head knowledge of God and of Jesus and of the cross and salvation but they have never applied the blood. They have never repented and believed. Uh, there are many of us as children of God who know to do right and know what it means to follow the Lord, and yet um, we're not putting it into practice. And so Jesus uses this old man's uh, response and said, you're right. So, you know, go love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Go love your neighbor. Uh, and you'll be sinlessly perfect, and that's all you need to do. Well, of course, um, the conviction must have smitten him, and it must have been evident to everyone around as well of the uh, inability of a human being to actually be able to fulfill this entire law. Because notice verse 29, so he willing to justify himself. The response, deflection. You ever deflected when you were convicted, when you were uh, called out, uh, when you were confronted? And so this learned man realizes that he not only could, make a, could not make a mockery of Jesus, but uh, he had been put on the spot. And his ineptness uh, and his sin uh, was on display. His need for a savior. And so rather than to humble himself and, and call out upon the Lord, he's willing to justify himself and deflection. And so he says, uh, hey, Jesus, then who, uh, let me ask you a question. Who's my neighbor? As if I've got point number one, I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's not a problem. I've got that figured out. Uh, but the neighbor, I just want to make sure now I've got that. <clears throat> Who's my neighbor? <clears throat> okay. Jesus entertains the question. Notice now in verse 30. So Jesus tells a parable. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's only a few miles. And while he was going, he fell among thieves. They stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Uh, what a brutal attack. A man traveling the road, main pathway, 
main uh, thoroughfare uh, for one for all the priests back and forth from Jerusalem to Jericho would um, uh, the priest often go because of schools and the temple and uh, and this main thoroughfare, perhaps in the middle of the night, but a man is jumped, he's mugged, he's beaten, he's stripped, everything is stolen, and he's left there in the road, half dead. What would you do? Um, you know, that's not too far-fetched. I mean, we live in New York City, and some of us have been victims. Some of us have seen people who have been brutalized. Um, sadly, it always breaks my heart. Um, to see and to hear of um, attacks on people and to see that social media posts um, were uploaded, that there were actually witnesses and bystanders at the scene while the attack took place. And instead of helping the victim, they were shooting video uh, and commentating about it and how sad that is as a as a society and culture and that that seems to be okay. Um, what would you do? Um, again, when, you know, you have to be safe and again, you know, there are different case scenarios, of course, but um, if you saw an individual lying in the road, what would you do? I remember one day driving here to the church from my home and my brother-in-law was with me and we were driving down the road and um, we came to a stoplight and, uh, light turned green and we pulled through the light and as we approached the next intersection saw that there was a, a man a very tall elderly man and he was walking um to the uh curb of the sidewalk as if when the light turned red then he would cross and as he came to the curb the light did turn red and we stopped and he took a step and then just immediately fell forward um without any bend, uh, he, he, he must have had a heart attack or something. I mean, this tall, a giant of a man and fell face forward and hit the pavement. Um, what do you do? Light turned green. We jumped out of the car and ran right over to the man and uh, rolled him over and he was extremely bloody. And uh, I'm glad to say people uh, were around, came running. And matter of fact, the city bus had passed by the same time and bus pulled over and people got off and there was some medical personnel and people called and um, right away people were there to help. Um, but we it may be tasked to uh, make some decisions sometime like this in our life and they're not easy. What would you do? Bible says that by chance, verse 31, Jesus said, there came down a certain priest that way. Oh, well, thank God. A priest a man who knows the law, a man who knows the heart and the mind of, of God himself. He has, if, if for no other reason, even God's commands that you, you help people, the priest perhaps going to work. And when he saw the man, the victim, he passed by on the other side. So notice he, he sees him visually. He, he understands what, what the situation is. And instead of making a move toward the man, he makes a move in the opposite direction to cross by on the other side. The one that you absolutely think should help doesn't. That's how it goes sometimes in life. Notice verse 33 and a certain, I'm sorry, verse 32 and likewise a Levite. Now this is a man who was in the, um, the, the, the priestly line probably someone who worked in the temple, had some temple responsibilities. When he came to that same place, he looked on him and he passed by on the other side. The same thing. So the people you would think would do something, don't. The people you would think would show compassion and mercy, don't. And what a sad testament it is when people who claim the name of Christ are the ones who are often um, more hardened, more disinterested. Verse 33, then a certain Samaritan, and if you remember the Samaritans were really disliked by the Jewish people. They were known as half-breeds. What a derogatory term. Um, they were a mixture of, of Jewish and of uh, Gentile. 
and <clears throat> they were often uh, uh, castigated and set apart and uh, the Jewish people really did not like them as a whole and the Samaritans didn't like Jewish people because they had ostracized them and so here's this Samaritan man a businessman we believe and he's traveling down that road and he sees this wounded victim and when he sees him the Bible says he had compassion on him wow mercy um, compassion is more than just pity pity sees and feels sorry Compassion always, always is accompanied with action. And when he went to him, uncrossed by on the other side, he goes to him, binds up his wounds, pours in oil and wine, gives him whatever medication he can to try to stop the bleeding and heal, puts him on his own beast. That means he walks, the Samaritan, and he brings him to a local inn and took care of him. He not only helped him on the road and dropped him off. He took him in for the night, paid for a room, and that night tried to care for him and restore him to health. And on the morrow, when he had to go, he took out some money and he gave it to the, the hotel keeper and he said, take care of him until he's up on his feet. And then when I come back through town, whatever you uh, have to do and whatever more you spend, if he stays however many nights, I will repay thee. Wow. And it, the indication is the hotel uh, keeper was fine with that. The Samaritan was an honorable man, a man that had his own word. So those who should have had the most compassion did not. The one you least expected would did. And notice Jesus asked the question. Now, which of you, of these three, dear lawyer, do you think was neighbor to him that fell among the thieves? Hmm. And the lawyer said, he that showed mercy on him. Even the lawyer still is, is just um, defensive. Even he can't say the Samaritan, just to say that the Samaritan was the one that was the, the most godlike. It just bothered him. And no doubt this lawyer understood that um, Jesus was inferring that he had not compassion. And he, though he said he knew the law and was fulfilling all the law, he really was not following through. There was no evidence of it. And talk is cheap. And that's really kind of the thought tonight. Jesus said, you're right. I know you can't even say or give credit to the Samaritan, but you said the guy who helped him, and you're right. So you go and do likewise. He that showed mercy. Mercy is an attribute of God, a characteristic of God, a perfection of God. And as children of God, it should be evidence in us. Um, we should be people who have compassion. Uh, Jude 22 says, and if some have compassion, we'll make a difference. So here we are living in this world that is unmerciful at times and cruel and selfish. Uh, and at times we can become like that. And we need to remember we are here to be a light, a reflection, an ambassador of Jesus Christ himself. And we can talk a lot and we can talk about our great love for the Lord. And we can talk about how we love other people, but do we reveal it? Remember James said in James chapter two, look, you can tell me about your faith, but it's so much greater if you can not only tell me about your faith, but show me your faith by your works. Um, we're to reveal it. Jesus showed his love to us when he left heaven and came to earth to die for us. Uh, how about it? Are you showing compassion? If we show compassion, we'll make a difference. Um, the Bible tells us in Matthew 5 and verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We're to show mercy. If we want people to have mercy upon us, compassion, we need to do the same. And so what a great reminder, a great teaching. Of course, Jesus um, uh, revealed, um, he, if you will, pulled the curtain back and that man understands, wow, I am far from being perfect. I am far from loving God as I need to. I'm far from following him and keeping his commandment. I'm far from loving people as I should. And 
he showed him his need of salvation. We don't know that that man ever became a believer. Um, but Jesus um, taught a great lesson. And for us, we know there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus, and we're grateful for his mercy. Um, but as believers, we need to be merciful, and we don't just need to be talking about it. Uh, we don't just need to tell people we love Jesus and that we love people, but is there evidence? Uh, what What am I doing to show compassion? What am I doing to reveal mercy to other people uh, in my life? Um, because when I do, I look like Jesus, and I'll be blessed with mercy. So may God help us as we think about this season. Um, pray, God, how is it, and in what ways can I show mercy and compassion to those who need it most and be more like you in the process? May God help that to be true of us. Let's pray. Lord, help us tonight, we pray, to be men and women who have mercy and show compassion. Help us, Lord, to look like you in that way. And not just talk about it, but live it. And Lord, I pray you'd bless our time of prayer. We pray for Isoline and Seema tomorrow in surgery. We pray for Anthony and Debbie. Lord, we know you have purpose and plan and help them in this time. And Lord, we pray for the Dobbs tonight and all of our missionaries. Lord, be glorified. Bless us this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week, and we will see you, God willing, this Sunday.